is the sequence n over n squared plus 1 convergent or divergent. So you have some options on how you want to compute this. You can do what we did on the last example when we had n over n plus 1 and switch it into a function and calculate the limit that way. Or what I can do, notice what's my largest power of n in the numerator or denominator? 2. 2, n squared, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and multiply top and bottom by 1 over n squared. So I haven't changed anything because it's really like I just multiplied by 1. Sometimes I think of this as being like a fancy 1 that I'm multiplying by. And now if we simplify in the numerator, you're going to get 1 over n in the numerator. And then in the denominator, you're going to have to distribute Okay, so distribute it out. You'll get 1 plus 1 over n squared. And now you can use your limit laws. I have a division, so I can break it up as the limit of the top divided by the limit of the bottom. What's the limit of 1 over n? Zero. Zero. Okay, so I know the numerator's limit. And the denominator, well, I have a limit of a sum, right, which our limit rules say I can split up as the limit of each piece. So I'm really looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared. What's the limit of 1? One. 1. What's the limit of 1 over n squared? 0. 0. So 0 over 1 plus 0, which is 0. Okay. Any questions about that? The other option you have, like I said, if you wanted to, you could convert this into a function, replace all the x's with n's, and take the limit and use, uh, you'll have to use L'Hopital's rule to calculate that limit. Okay? All right, let's do maybe two more. So the first one is going to be, is the sequence. a sub n, which is n over the square root of 10 plus n, convergent or divergent. So let's try to do the same thing we did before when I was calculating in the last example. n over the square root of 10 plus n. So what I did in the last example is I looked for the largest degree term in the numerator. So what's my largest degree in the numerator? One. One. That's all I've got. And then the denominator, it's underneath the square root. One half, really, right? Because there's an n, but it's underneath a square root. So you think about it as being n to the one half. It's not really n to the one half, but think about it like that. So the larger of the two, which one's larger? The numerator, the n. 
So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over n. So it's easy for me to simplify the numerator now. I'm just going to get 1. The denominator is a little bit harder because one of the terms is under a square root and one of them is not. So before you can simplify the denominator, think about this as being 1 over the square root of n squared. Do we agree that that's the same thing as 1 over n? Yeah? And now that they're both under square roots, I can multiply them and combine them together. Okay? So I'm looking at the limit of 1 over the square root 10 plus n times 1 over n squared. Would the square root not go away when you multiply two square roots? No. Only if they were the same thing underneath the square root. Like, think of it in terms of numbers. So like it was a conjugate of it, then it would go away? If it was the same exact number. So if you had like square root of 2 times square root of 2, then it would be 2. But if you have square root of 2 times square root of 3, you'd get square root of 2 times 3 or square root of 6. So only when they're just alike. Because you have to pair up things in order to bring them out of the square root. Okay. Okay, so we're going to distribute our uh, underneath our square root. 1 over the square root, 10 over n squared, plus 1 over n. So we're done simplifying everything, so now we just need to think about what's happening in the numerator, what's happening in the denominator. What's the limit of my numerator? 1, right? It's just fixed, okay? Now to think about the limit of the denominator, look at inside of the square root. What's the limit of 10 over n squared? 0. What's the limit of 1 over n? 0. 0 plus 0 is 0, and the square root of 0 is still 0. 1 over 0, so remember that that means I have an infinity for the limit. I have 1 over a really tiny positive number, so that means this limit is going to be infinity. You said that 1 over 0 is a function of infinity? Yeah, because what you're doing is this number you told me underneath the radical, these are really small numbers, right? For n really large, like 1 over n, if I take n to be 100, 1 over 100 is really small, right? So the numbers underneath the square root are really small. And when I take the square root of a small number, it's still going to be small. So I have ten, 1 over a teeny tiny number, positive number. 1 over a really small number is a big number, right? When you have small numbers in the denominator, you get big numbers overall. Yeah? So that's how we're getting infinity. So what is the answer? Does my sequence converge or diverge? Diverge. diverge. So the answer is diverges. <laughs>